This video shows the results of cue ball deflection or squirt testing for various shafts and tips of different hardnesses and sizes. The video also shows a simple testing procedure that anybody can do on their own to test any cues or tips without any special equipment. The tips we tested included an ultra skin, very soft, a Kamui black, hard, an experimental two material composite, and a phenolic. These tips cover a wide range of types and hardnesses. Each tip was mounted on the same cue with a solid maple 13mm diameter large ferrule shaft. Two different tip heights were tested, 275 thousandths of an inch and 155 thousandths of an inch, measured from the edge of the ferrule to the top center of the tip. Each tip at each height was shaped to the same US dime radius. One set of hole reinforcement labels or little white donuts was placed carefully along a straight line aligned with the first diamond. The first donut is used to help ensure accurate and consistent cue ball placement. The other two, along with the diamond on the rail, define the center ball hit line. The second set of donuts are 9 16 of an inch to the left of the first, including one to the left of the diamond on the rail. These donuts are used to help ensure accurate and consistent cue alignment for each off-center hit shot. All of the donuts are aligned with the rail diamonds. On the foot rail, there is a ruler template taped to the table with the zero mark aligned with the center of the first diamond. This template is available in the Instructor and Student Resources section of my website at billiards.colostate.edu. A center ball hit would send the cue ball directly to the zero point on the ruler, marked here with the nine ball. Here's a close-up of the center ball tip alignment. For the squirt tests, the cue is aligned with the donuts shifted to the left 9 16 of an inch. We are using an elephant practice ball, which has a 1 and an eighth inch diameter red circle indicating the miscue limit for the tip contact point. With the cue shifted to the left 9 16 of an inch, the center of the cue is aimed at the center of the left side of the red circle. The donuts and red circle help ensure an accurate and consistent aim and tip contact point. If you don't have an elephant practice ball, you can use a striped ball instead with the stripe vertical and the center of the cue aimed at the edge of the stripe. Again, a center ball hit sends the cue ball straight to the zero point on the scale. With the cue in the 9 16 of an inch offset position, the cue ball squirts offline creating cue ball deflection. This is what we are measuring in the video, the amount of cue ball deflection at the rail. The yellow line is used to show the cue ball path and its contact point on the foot rail scale. I place these lines over the video during frame by frame playback to help locate the measurements on the ruler accurately. The fine lines on the ruler are 1 8 of an inch apart and measurements are taken to the nearest 1 16 of an inch. Here you can clearly see the amount of squirt. In this case it is about 2 inches plus 3 and a half eighths or 2 and 7 16 of an inch. The first cue tested was a Predator Z2 with a medium hardness Mori tip. The purpose for this test was to provide a low squirt baseline to which to compare other measurements. The first shot had a squirt of about 1 and 5 eighths of an inch. Here are two additional shots with similar values. After each set of shots, the results are summarized and averaged to the nearest eighth. The average squirt measured for the Predator Z2 was 1 and 5 eighths. For the remaining test, three different people took five to seven shots for each tip type and height on the same high squirt test shaft, doing their best to achieve a consistent aiming line, tip contact point, and speed for each shot. People are not perfect, and each person could have a slightly different cue alignment, tip contact point, speed, and stroke for each shot, but we did our best to be as consistent as possible. Only the three most consistent shots were kept from each five to seven set and then the results were averaged to help reduce variability. All averages were rounded to the nearest eighth of an inch. The cue was kept as level as possible and fast speed was used to minimize the effect of cue ball curving or swerve. Obviously, it would have been better if we had used a robotic cue testing machine instead of people, but with careful shooting and consistent testing procedures, the human results are fairly accurate and consistent. The first tip tested was the ultra skin, very soft, at the tall tip height. All of the results are summarized and discussed at the end of the video, so if you get tired of watching all of the shots, skip forward to the results section. The first shooter is Palm, a fairly good player.
Here, he was fairly consistent with an average squirt of two inches. This is Roland, who is also a decent player, and who is the Q technician who mounted and shaped each tip to the proper radius and height for each test. Thanks, Roland. You might notice that Roland has a slight stroke swoop to the left when applying left side spin. This can result in a slightly different line of aim and a slightly different tip contact point than what would occur with a straight stroke. He also used the slowest speed of the three of us, possibly making swerve more of a factor. But again, the important thing here was to be fairly consistent, which he was. His average squirt was about 1 and 7 eighths. The third shooter is me, Dr. Dave. I used a faster speed than the other two to help minimize cue ball swerve effects, although it can be a little more difficult to maintain accuracy and consistency with the faster speed. Regardless, my consistency was fairly good. My average squirt for the first test was about two and a half inches. Here's the average of the three shooters for the first test. Again, all of the results will be summarized and discussed at the end of the video. After each tip was tested with the tall height, it was then shaved down and shaped to the shorter height and tested again. Here are the results for the short ultra skin tip. Again, here's the average value for the three shooters, in this case about two and a quarter inch. The second tip tested was a Kamui Black Hard. Here are the results for the tall tip height. And here are the Kamui Black results for the short tip height. The next tip tested was an experimental two material composite tip. Here you can see the two materials, a hard rubber base rim with a leather core and top. Here are the results for the tall version of the tip. Notice that with the shortened height, most of the leather top has been removed from this tip.
Here are the results for the short version of the experimental tip. The last tip tested was a phenolic tip, which was tested only at the short height. Here are the phenolic tip results. Here's a concise summary of all of the data from all of the tests. As you can see, the squirt did not vary much with tip type, hardness, or size. Tip type, size, and hardness definitely affect the sound and feel of a hit, but the tip appears to have very little effect on cue ball deflection. Over the extremely wide range of tip types, hardnesses, and sizes we tested, the average squirt varied over a fairly small range of 2 and an eighth to 2 and a half. Tip height didn't seem to make much of a difference. With two of the tips, the squirt was a little larger with the shorter height. And with one of the tips, the squirt was a little smaller with the shorter height. Generally, a harder tip is expected to produce slightly less squirt than a softer tip. However, swerve can also be a factor because a harder tip will create more cue ball speed for the same stroke, which will result in less swerve and less net cue ball deflection. For more information and demonstrations relating to these effects, go to the FAQ section at billiards.colostate.edu and check out the Squirt and Swerve resource pages. For the data in these experiments, the hardest tip tested actually had slightly more net cue ball deflection than the others. What is obvious and well understood is that the effective end mass of the shaft is the primary predictor of squirt. The predator shaft, the end of which is hollowed out with a shorter and lighter ferrule, and with the shaft turned down to 11.75 millimeters, had a much smaller squirt than the solid maple test shaft that has a diameter of 13 millimeters and a large ferrule. The test shaft had an average squirt of about two and a quarter inch, which is about 40% larger than the one and five eighth inch produced by the low squirt shaft. I hope you enjoyed viewing the results of our experiment. Now you know what to do if you want to test your own shafts or tips.